So Pedro, tell me about some uh, new things you've done in this year's race. Uh, we changed the buoys. We had big buoys last year, but this year we had we have buoys that are three meters tall, uh, three meters in diameter. Uh, something I just mentioned to you, we have uh, Luis Lima, who was the first king of the sea, Brazilian king of the sea. He's commentating the event from the ocean. He's on a stand-up uh, board, battle board, and he has a microphone. You can see him here uh, in between the red buoy and the white buoy. And he's giving a comment who's ahead, who, what's happening on the turns. And, so we have that. Uh, we have a lot more people. This year we have close to 1,500 people. Uh, we would have a lot more, but we request uh, medical release from every person that to participate. Otherwise, we'd have 3,000, 4,000 people. Uh, we added the, the stand. We have a stand for about 100 people that is already kind of full up, but we expect to be packed for the uh, Queen of the Sea race coming up. Uh, we have a beach to walk on there. The swimmers, the participants, they swim for one kilometer and they run on the sand in Copaca on Copacabana Beach for 2K, so they go 1K and go come back 1K. We had a sprint event to introduce people who think that 2K race is too much. Uh, so there's a 1K race as well that happens together with the, fir with the first race. And then we have our main amateur race going on right now, the King and Queen of the Sea Circuit. This is the third stage. We've, uh, we, we had one in April, one in May, one in September, and this is the third one. Uh, and the people run. They swim and exactly. they run. Uh, on the 2K race, they go for one lap of 1K, and then they run on the beach for about 50 meters. The same uh, same 50 meters that the uh, professionals, the, the elite swimmers, are going to be doing for the King and the Queen of the Sea race. It's the same circuit. But the, the elite swimmers are going to, the women are going to do seven laps, the men will do ten laps, and the amateur uh, swimmers do two laps. What right. is the advantage of the swimmers coming out of the water? To make it different, uh, for TV, we try to make the, the event as uh, TV friendly as possible. So that's why this year we also, we decreased the size of the, the lap. Last year, we hit, last year we had five 2K laps, this year we have ten laps. So to bring the swimmers close to the sand, close to TV, uh, the most interesting time for the audience uh, watching here on the beach and through TV is when they leave the water. So we wanted to maximize that, but still keeping it a much a, a race that is it's only it's a, uh, over 90% of the race is on the water and less than 10% is on the sand. Yeah, and TV is a big part of that. TV is a huge part of it. Uh, from the first event we, we realized TV Global, the main channel in Brazil, uh, came on board with us. Uh, next, uh, last, uh, yesterday we had, oh, this is also something that I think is different. Uh, we, based on F1 racing, we had a, a grid race, a race, uh, a one lap race that determined the, who was gonna, who was gonna be the first woman to enter the waters and the second woman the ranking. And, so we had that yesterday, that was live on TV, probably to around 15 million people here in Brazil. Wow. And then the, this, the Queen of the Sea race, the last lap, is going to be again live on TV for probably another 15, 20 million people. And then tomorrow the King of the Sea race is going to be live for probably close to an hour. So the race is going to be an hour and a half. So two thirds of the race uh, are going to be televised live to again 20 million people, the most popular. TV show in Brazil, the Sunday program called Sports Spectacular. Wow. And so, uh, TV is a huge priority for us. We try to make it, as, as I mentioned, as TV friendly as possible. And so, we installed a view, you can, this huge structure for the TV. They get a shot from way above. We installed something that can be further away, but an overpass for the TV that uh, communicated the race to hundreds of thousands of people that drove by it in the plunge every day. We have TV here. We have also on that pier, on the fortress, we have a TV camera structure set up there so they got a closer look of their swimmers coming by. We have TV on boat. You can see the yellow boat, the TV boat uh, with the camera. And tomorrow we're going to have a helicopter for the whole race. The helicopter is going to be getting images from above. Wow, wow. And you, you have, uh, for the pros, you actually 
give money. For? You give money. For the pros. We are giving this year, including the grid and the main race, the total prize money is around uh, 20, a little under $20,000. Wow. Yeah. US dollars. US dollars. Wow. And we're also making a donation for a foundation in Brazil called Pro Criança. Happens to be my mom's uh, foundation, my mom's daughter. But for children with heart problems, my mom is a cardiologist. And we have donated already in the history of the King of the Sea event uh, $20,000 US dollars. Wow. And we hope in this race, we hope now we are donating this race $16,000, $17,000 in this wow. race alone. Wow. So we increase in the, the donation every, every event. With yeah. every event. What is your vision for the future of the King and Queen of the Sea? Yeah, we've already realized we did an event, the King of, uh, the, King of the Sea, Lisbon, in Portugal this year. And we're going to have it again, uh, happening in Lisbon. The, for amateur and elite families, he qualified the El Alexander Studensky, uh, won the race, the, the race there, and qualified to, to be here. We also had a Portuguese swimmer, uh, Daniela Pinto, who also qualified from the Queen of the Sea, Portugal. We we, we did a drawing, a draw for an amateur swimmer to have the chance to participate. And we have Pedro Basilio, who is a swimmer with special needs. He doesn't have one leg. And he did the duathlon. He ran for 2K on the sand. It was beautiful to watch. And then we are hoping to take the event to other countries, maybe even the US. Uh, I've been talking to you, Steve, about this. Maybe 2011. And we hope to have at least one in each country. There's a popular Brazilian song called Leme Pontal, and he wanted to do that race. The whole, but Leme is a beach, Leme Beach, and Pontal is another beach. They are 35k away. 
and we talked to TV Globe and said, oh, if you do it, we'll televise it. So, but they want it to be live, the finish to be live, and Sports Spectacular. And Sports Spectacular starts at 9.30 in the morning. So Luis left Lamy at 1 in the morning, well, at night. And when Luis got to the beach, we had a lot of people there to watch. And the fifth match, we started screaming, hey, king of the beach, or king of the sea, king of the sea, king of the sea. And we had the idea of uh, crowning Luis king of the sea for that year. And then last year we invited, as you know, five international swimmers, four other Brazilian swimmers, to see who was the king of the sea last year. And we had Trent Green to uh, win the race, Luis was fourth. And we had a new, a new king of the sea that wasn't able to come this year because he was sick for part of the year. But he sent his brother, Cody Grimsey, who won the great race yesterday. One of the favorites is defending the family title in the race. So it, it happened that way. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I want to publicly, publicly through you, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, not just for coming. Last year you came on the event. You had no idea what the event was going to be when you invited you and you came. The event grew certainly because of you. And nationally, internationally, we got... Uh, more credibility from international swimmers because you recommended that you have a, you probably are responsible for if not all of the international swimmers at least 80 percent of the international swimmers were here you it was an invitation made by you uh, readily accepted